Hi everyone, welcome to this community live event. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whatever you are located in the world, welcome to this session. So today we're talking about a very important topic that you will be experiencing right now or maybe in future. So our Cisco experts are going to share everything that you need to know also as the best practices when you migrate from Biptela to OS to XSD1. All right. So before we get started, we'd just like to share with you a couple of news and upcoming events related to this topic or to this Cisco community. First of all, do you know that we have a new look, feel, and features in the Cisco community? Just have a look there. We have a blog where you can check out everything that is new in the Cisco community. Some of you have noticed and some of you haven't, but we hope to know if you like this new feel and experiences. Also, we would like to invite all of you to become an event top contributor. And the way to do this is participating in the community. Either if you share documents, videos, blogs, or any kind of content, or you are someone who help out others to solve their questions, or even create any new questions, well, that gives you special points to become an event top contributor. This award has place every month. So every month you get the chance to get this award. And how we do that, and uh, talking about the points, well, don't forget that if someone give you useful information, you can give them a helpful vote, or if someone give you the right answer, you can give them an accepted solution. This does not only help us out to identify these contributors that can uh, win this award, but also to identify which content is valuable. So, well, I would like to introduce you to our panel today of experts. Uh, we have Rakesh, we have Anand, and we have Suresh. All of them are specialized in these solutions and in these technologies. So welcome guys to this event, and thank you so much for sharing your time and knowledge. Also for supporting them and handling all the questions so you always get attention during this session, we have two lovely ladies here joining us to help out to Aboard all your questions. So, in the meantime, someone is presenting. Please don't feel shy. You will be able to have an answer in the chat or the Q and A. Also, thank you so much for joining us today. So, you can have a look to today's presentation. It's going to be available in the community as well. And finally, and not last least, please don't forget to use the Q and A panel. Uh, you have different panels in your Webex. The Q&A panel help us out to better answer and organize all your questions. So please use that one for all related inquiries to this session. And if you have something extra different, like, hey, uh, I would like to contact one expert directly. I'm having problems with my audio, my screen freeze, and things like that. Please, in that case, just use the chat panel as well, okay? So finally, I'll Let's gonna get started. So I'm gonna provide all the privileges to our presenters today. Hey there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, as Hilda mentioned, we've, we're here to discuss a very important topic about the migration of the install, Biptela OS install base to iOS X ESD van. Uh, I'm a director of product management and I'm joined by my very able colleagues, Prakash and Suresh who will uh, do the technical aspects of the uh, of the uh, presentation. So uh, just a little bit about the agenda here. Uh, Prakash, if you could go to the next slide, I probably will be just doing the easy part, the introduction. What are we going to talk about and why? And uh, I will leave it to Prakash to talk you through some of the key building blocks in terms of what are the next generation solutions? What is it about the next generation solutions that make them so attractive? Uh, and talk you through some of the salient data points around uh, both the devices, the performance, the scale, and give you a brief comparison of what existed in the past and what we have on our train today. Uh, towards the end, Suresh will take over and he will actually talk about certain design best practices from a migration standpoint and talk about the workflows and tools that are available from Cisco as far as an effective and efficient migration from your install base of Viptela OS to iOS XESD band. So let's get going. Uh, 
Prakash, if we can go to the next slide. I think this is probably a slide that you've seen multiple times around. It talks about the entire transition that has happened in our customers' deployment scenarios. Uh, the fact that traditional band technologies were in the past used to connect from uh, remote sites, branches, and uh, multiple offices into the heart of the enterprise network uh, was was a given. And that's that's how we did our business for the past 20, 25 years. But in came SD-WAN. SD-WAN came with the promise of securing that entire WAN connectivity. It came with the promise of ensuring that the connection that is between the user at the branches, at their home office, or even in public sites, into the enterprise's heart or core is secure. It is uh, uh, something that can be analyzed, tracked, and troubleshooting would, would uh, be taken care of. And just the advent of SaaS and public cloud kind of made this problem a lot more interesting. Uh, we moved from being just providers of connectivity between a remote site and the headquarters or the data center to a mechanism that was a secure cloud that would now allow for connectivity between a user, that's you and me, uh, that's probably anywhere in the world, but needs to, uh, to connect and uh, use the enterprise applications, be it hosted on uh, the enterprise data center, the headquarters. Uh, they could also be SaaS applications, or it could be in the cloud, not one cloud, but multi-cloud. In doing so, uh, the nightmare that the IT operations team faced was the one thing that defined what SD-MAN was about. It was about connecting things, people, devices to the enterprise in a secure manner, in an automated manner as well, because what worked today has perhaps is not is going to change tomorrow. And the entire focus of the activity from SD-WAN perspective became about how you could change in not minutes, days, or weeks, but in seconds. And that's essentially what SD-WAN was all about. Uh, Prakash, if we go to the next slide, the evolution of Cisco's SD-WAN story started with the acquisition of Viptela, a company in, um, in, the, in the 2017 timeframe. And it is indeed that acquisition that built the framework for what comes today as the Cisco iOS XE SD-WAN solution. When we are talking about the entire gamut of uh, services or features that are available on iOS XE for SD-WAN. Uh, I think the fact that providing end-to-end -end visibility to the network administrators, providing the ability to not only see when an event has happened, but perhaps even uh, foresee that an event is about to happen and uh, give them the, uh, the power to try and change things on the fly to try and adapt on the fly became a very important part of what the uh, the SD-WAN solution asks for. I did mention about how cloud has become very important. Uh, in fact, about 90 plus percent of our customers today have some application delivered on the cloud. And 70 plus percent of them have got not one cloud, but multiple clouds. How does one IT provider ensure that the, uh, the experience that an end uh, user of the enterprise uh, you know, has in a secure manner, and how do you allow for that to be uh, the same or similar or equally good between multiple cloud environments became a, huge, uh, became a huge issue. How do you do it in a secure manner? How do we ensure that there is no breach, uh, there is uh, there are enough perimeters and there is, uh, you know, uh, ubiquitous security across the data center, the branches and the cloud became very important. Uh, with the growing need of 
uh, applications with the growing need of uh, data to be transmitted between remote users and enterprise data centers and cloud, allowing for this to be done over a high performance network became very important. The kinds of applications changed. Applications changed from being, you know, small uh, chatty applications to things like video that necessitated a huge pipe and necessitated uh, the need for the experience to be similar, right? Also very important at this point in time was the fact that Cisco has spent over 30 plus years providing enterprise solutions on the van. Uh, we've offered a myriad of use cases, be it unified communications, multi-tenancy and so on and so forth, that have been uh, the, uh, the cornerstone of Cisco's success as far as van technologies are concerned. How do we offer all of that Existing use cases um, to our next generation users going to SD WAN became a big critical ask. And that's where iOS XE addresses all of these uh, facets, be it delivering a multi cloud experience across AWS, Azure, GCP, and also with our SDCI partners like Unix and Megaport, providing the best of best end to end visibility not only on our own vManage solution, but also using solutions like vAnalytics and Thousand Eyes, providing the best of breed security from Cisco's portfolio, not only that's something that's available on our platforms, but also on the cloud using our umbrella solution, uh, giving you the best of breed performance on our latest generation Catalyst 8K product family that has been a roaring success over the past 18 months and giving you an end-to-end -end seamless connectivity between the cloud, the, app, the SaaS applications, and the hybrid workers. Uh, I think iOS XE does it all. No wonder we have you know, the latest and greatest solution available with you, but these are also MEF uh, 3.0 certified, so that now you have the best of breed solution that has been stamped by the authority in the business. Uh, Prakash, if we could go to the next slide, what we wanted to talk about is that this iOS XE based solution has been the front and center for our SD WAN portfolio in this year 2022. Right? It is offered with the best of beat products. We do support iOS XE SD WAN on the earlier generation products, which was the ISR 4K, the ASR 1K, but we have now enabled the same on the Catalyst 8000 as well as the ISR 1K, which goes into those smaller branches. We have given you the best of breed capabilities on iOS XE SD WAN, be it about uh, the latest and greatest in terms of security, multi cloud orchestration, um, app awareness, and uh, all the goodies that came with the Vitella solution, which was uh, based on the OMP protocol. We have definitely spend the past two, three years in elevating what we got from the Vitella acquisition into what we now believe is the best in class, both from a infrastructure or hardware perspective, but also from the software uh, perspective. Also from the fact that it gives you the immense amount of flexibility to deploy these solutions anywhere, uh, to any device in at any location, right? So, uh, Prakash, if you could go to the next slide. This actually talks about what we got from the WebTele acquisition in, acquisition in terms of a base architecture. We got that entire transport agnostic SD-WAN solution that could be deployed in multiple uh, architectures, be it Hubble, Scope, Spoke, or Mesh, or a mix of, of the two. We gave you the entire flexibility of using direct internet access as against using an MPLS circuit in the past. We gave you a wonderful platform in the name of vManage that allowed you to uh, centrally orchestrate and manage the entire solution and offered you the entire savings in terms of service uh, circuit costs. What we have since done is we've extended these base capabilities that came from the Viptala acquisition and spent our time, money, and energy to give you the best of breed in terms of these four pillars, multi-cloud, 
application experience, security, and analytics. Uh, I did talk about some of this in the previous slide, so I don't want to repeat myself, but I want to definitely focus on the fact that we have spent uh, uh, enough effort in ensuring that we give you that flexibility and the best of breed application experience, security, and analytics. Uh, Prakash, if you could go to the next slide, this actually talks about how there was a base architecture that came with the Webtela uh, acquisition. We had what is called as the entire controller plane, which comprised of the vManage, the vSmart, the vBonds, and the vAnalytics uh, engines that gave you the management plane, the control plane, the security, as well as the analytics and the entire frill of, uh, you know, uh, multi-cloud on-ramp security and application quality of experience. But we also came with a set of devices, a set of infrastructure that allowed you to deploy these in the branch locations. Be it the VH cloud in the virtual form factor in the cloud or the VH 5K uh, uh, on the data centers, the VH 2K on the campuses and the VH 100 and 1K on the branches. We have augmented this infrastructure portfolio with the availability of the CAT 8KV, the Catalyst 8500, the Catalyst 8300, and the 8200 along with the ISR 1K across the cloud, the data center, the campus, and the branch. And for our co-location vendors, we have actually partnered with Megaport and Equinix to give you the entire flexibility of deploying it anywhere in the world on the Megaport or Equinix colo uh, locations using the Catalyst 8000V. What we have recently announced in the month of May is that we are moving away from these old aging infrastructure elements, which is the VH5K, the VH2K. And in the past, we had already announced the end of sale of the VH100 and, uh, and 1000. We are now offering you the best of breed SD-WAN architecture with the best of breed infrastructure and the best of breed OS, which is iOS XE. Uh, Prakash, if you could go to the next slide. Uh, just a recap of what the end of sale announcements have been like. The VH100 and the VH1000 end of life was announced earlier in August 2020, with the actual end of sale happening in January 2021. Uh, these devices were uh, replaced by an ISR 1100 4G and 6G uh, and the 4G LTE devices. And uh, they are now. They have been end of sale for the past one and a half years. Uh, in fact, the a vast majority of our existing Pepella OS base installed base have started deploying the ISR 1100s. And we are along the path of you know uh, the end of software maintenance and end of vulnerability support in, in a couple of years. Uh, recently, in May, on the 9th of May, 2022, we did announce the end of sale of the Viptela OS-based VH2000 and the VH5000 hardware devices that went into uh, the campuses and uh, the data centers or the aggregation locations. These devices, the VH2K and 5K, will be end of sale in the month of January of 2023. So you still have another six months to plan for any last minute purchases of these devices. They will follow an, end of so an extended end of software maintenance and an end of vulnerability support. Um, timelines that go into uh, September 2025. And these devices will be supported from an RMA perspective till the last day of support date, which is in January of 2028. We also wanted to mention that the Viptela OS 20.9, which will get posted next month, will be uh, the last operating system version, uh, and it's an extended release, uh, which will be supporting the Viptela uh, VH2K, VH 5K and even the VH Cloud properties. Uh, you can see that the end of software maintenance and the end of vulnerability support timelines for the VH 2K, 5K, and the VH Cloud are aligned to the Vipella OS 20.9. Uh, I think that was the easy part announcing end of life on a platform that is old. So you would ask which platforms do our customers go to? So Prakash, if you could go to the next slide, which elaborates and mentions what that transition is going to look like. 
the VH5000 will be replaced by the Catalyst 8500 platforms on the aggregation uh, standpoint. Prakash has got a full uh, set of slides that talks about the performance, the scale, the capability. So I'm not going to spend time on that. Uh, similarly, the VH2000 will move to the Catalyst 8300 or the 8200. Uh, the uh, VH100 and 1000, uh, the 100B, which was all Ethernet, the 100M, which had uh, the wireless or LTE interfaces and the uh, the VH1000, which was the denser device, have now been replaced by the ISR 1100, 4G, 6G, and the 4G LTE devices that ran the Viptela OS. These devices have the unique capability that they can also run iOS XE as an operating system. So we now have the capability that starting release iOS XE release 17.4, you can now run iOS XE on these existing ISR 1100, 4G, 6G, and 4G LTE devices. Last but not the least, the VH Cloud will be transitioned over to the Catalyst 8000V, which is available both on the cloud, which is uh, AWS Azure GCP, but also on our hardware platforms, uh, virtualization platforms like the 8200 UCP, the ENCS, and the CSP. So, uh, Prakash, if we can go to the next slide, we do we did spend a lot of time in preparation for uh, you know this transition. We know that probably announcing the end of sale for these devices was the easiest bit, but ensuring that we provide all the tools, all the bells and whistles for our customers to actually migrate their existing base, providing the entire gamut of support from Cisco was very important, which is why we have spent enough time in coming up with a comprehensive package. For all of our customers who deploy the VH 100, 1000, 2000, or the 5000, we are offering a unique offer where you get any of our existing customers on these devices, get 30% off the new Catalyst 8000 or the ISR 1K platforms that they buy. They also get 30% off on uh, the subscription for these platforms. We have a little bit more detail in the next slide. But along with the commercial offer, we are also offering an entire gamut of training and best, best practice documentation. And my colleague Suresh will walk, walk through some of that uh, later in this presentation to talk through what are the migration best practices, what are the proven method methodologies that you could use to migrate your customer base. We also have a set of automation tools that help you migrate or convert templates from Webtela OS to iOS XE that help you plan for your network's transition from Webtela OS to iOS XE. And that will also be covered in the later part of this uh, in this presentation. Uh, our Cisco CX services has also come up with packages, pre-packaged solutions that help you uh, plan and deploy the newer solution, and uh, they can be of great assistance to help you and your customers migrate. Last but not the least, we also have our partners who've been trained, our uh, mentored partners who've been trained with the migrations. So you have multiple options to consider. As a customer, you could either come to Cisco CX, you could go to one of our mint partners, or with all of the wonderful training that we've put together, you could try to do it on your own. One quick view at the next slide that talks about the migration offer. Uh, we have a single PID or product ID called the VHMIGPM that can be used. It's, it's a bundle that allows you to select the hardware of your choice and the subscription of your choice at a list price, which is 30% lower than the standard list price. So any customer or partner Placing an order of this uh, product ID, the VHMIGPM, will instantly get a 30% uh, slashing of the of the price. And uh, we, uh, of course, any such orders will go on a hold, and we will uh, review at the back end whether this is indeed an existing customer and an existing migration scenario. And this offer is available till the end of uh, Cisco's fiscal year. Uh, FI23, which is July end 2023. So you have the next one year for you to start uh, to make use of this 
financial offer to migrate your customers over to the newer platforms. Uh, Prakash, if we could go to the next slide that covers an entire set of material that is available to, on Cisco Sales Connect landing page uh, that will give you uh, all of this information. And in the interest of time, Prakash, we could probably just quickly surf at or take a look at the tools which are available on the next slide. And Suresh will be spending time on this entire gamut of tools that will help you migrate. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I did mention this verbally on the next slide. We have that option that a customer could either use, uh, you know, the migration services, use the part that are offered by C Cisco CX. They could use it, uh, use our partners, our trained partners, or they could decide to complete the migration on their own. And we have that entire flexibility and entire uh, material available to our partners. I know I've taken longer than I should have, so I'm just quickly going to pass over the patent to Prakash from a presentation perspective. But just before we do that, I'd like to have a quick poll that goes out uh, that we'd like you to answer. Do you indeed have an existing customer of Fiptilla OS that you would like to migrate to iOS X ESD band over the next year? Uh, please help us understand whether you do indeed have one or not. And you, you have the next one minute to post your response, but we'll have Prakash go over the next set of slides. Prakash, on to you. Yeah, that is correct. Just, let's just give guys just a couple of seconds for, for the audience to answer. If you're not able to see the polling question, uh, make sure it is located at the bottom side, the right side you will be able to participate there. And if you're on a mobile device, just use the tiny spheres that are in the middle of your screen. So we have like 20 more seconds to go. And Prakash, if you want to get ready with the next slide before we provide the answers. We have about half of the audience with answering yes, where they have an existing VH infrastructure that would like to migrate to iOS XC, maybe the next one year or so. Thanks, thanks everyone for participating in the poll. So hello everyone, my name is uh, Prakash Kilalani. Uh, over the next few slides, I'll go through platform positioning details that will help you, uh, you know, to position the right platform when migrating from VH to any of the iOS XE based platforms. And as part of this, at a very high level, I'll also go through some of the key building blocks that make up the Catalyst 8000 Edge platforms family. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the key differentiations between VH and Catalyst 8000 platform. So the next section will help you to position the right platform for your existing VH infrastructure that you would like to migrate to iOS and CSD. So let's get started. So with the launch of uh, Catalyst 8500 platforms, we introduced QFP 3.0, the third generation quantum flow processor, which is one of the best innovations that Cisco has produced. So the architecture of QFP 3.0, it's, it's quite an uplift from the earlier first and the second generation of QFP that were hosted with ASR 1000 platforms. And we'll talk about uh, the QFP 3.0 rocket architecture at a very high level you know, in the next slide as well. And the other platforms in the Catalyst 8000 Edge platforms family, they host x86 based multi-core CPU that allows you to run dynamic core location feature for, for key services deployment, for example, sd and security services, app QA and such services. Lastly, all the benefits that you see here with QFP 3.0 and features like dynamic core allocation, they are further elevated by the superior software, which is the iOS XE operating system. And Cisco has been innovating with iOS XE since decades now and has built a rich ecosystem you know, that enables multitude of use cases with deployment of applications in data center or cloud. So it is this rich ecosystem that you can leverage that has the rest of the innovations like QFP 3.0, QFP 3.0 dynamic core allocation with best of the hardware with Catalyst 8000 and ISR 1000 platforms and with best of the software that is iOS XE. So comparing this, if I compare this architecture with best of the benefits that are available over here, comparing this with VH platforms, uh, these are x86 based. They don't support key features like dynamic core allocation. And all of the SD-WAN security functions, for example, AppQA is another example over there. 
and many other key features that are critical for today's sd band networks which are supported with ios 6 sd band but not with the vh platforms quickly let me take a minute or so to talk about the third generation qfp 3.0 architecture so it is quite possible that you must have already been uh, familiar with this architecture so i'll be very brief when i go through this slide so if you look at the architecture here the traffic manager and the PPE blocks that existed in the earlier generation of QFP. With QFP 3.0, it also hosts you know, inline crypto and layer 2 aggregation blocks as well. The crypto block is also accompanied with hardware assist block that enables efficient processing of L4 to L7 features. The integrated L2 Mac that eliminates the need of feeder and consumer chip, which you would typically see in the modular chases of ASR 1000 line card architecture. Enhanced cost and buffering that allows you to that allows the business critical traffic to be classified and treated as high priority traffic from from the moment it enters in the system, and then you also have large ingress and egress buffers to handle any of the over subscription efficiently. So it is if you look at the architecture, it is truly a, in, indeed a truly scalable architecture that takes the performance for all the features on this Catalyst 8000 platforms to another level and a big very key differentiation. You know, when comparing to VH5000, for example, which does all the crypto processing in software, and basically that limits the performance when comparing with Catalyst 85. Dynamic core allocation feature is another key capability on Catalyst 8300, 8200, and ISR 1100X platforms with dynamic core allocation. Uh, the system can be brought up in service optimized core allocation mode when you allocate where you can allocate some cores to other services that you want to run on the platform like sd WAN security functions. The key feature, this key feature allows you to meet throughput or service requirements based on the customer demand. So for the customers who don't need services, they can turn all the service cores to data plane to optimize system for higher performance. And this capability is not supported with VH platforms as I mentioned earlier. And not only it doesn't support dynamic core allocation, but it also doesn't support you know, a lot of other features like supported with XCSD WAN, like the full stack of SD WAN security functions. Trustworthy solutions, again, a very key capability supported with Catalyst 8000 and ISR 1000 platforms. It enables six different layers of security where different aspects of security are checked before the hardware and software are considered as authentic. It is a built-in security feature that validates the hardware, CPU, and the software you know, using Cisco digital uh, signature or certificates when the device boots up. If any of the digital check fails, the device, the Cisco device will not let the software to boot to avoid any malicious code to be run. So TAM again will do a second layer of hardware authenticity check by cryptographic check uh, using SUDI or secure unique device identifier, which is unique to Cisco hardware. This component brings in integrity and authenticity to protect against any of the temper attacks. Now, in the previous slides, having looked at the generic capabilities that covers the ISR 1000 and the Catalyst 8000 platforms, let's now look at some of the key differentiations between VH and Catalyst 8000 platforms from a platform data plane architecture perspective. So let's start with crypto architecture. So all the crypto processing that is your encrypt and decrypt functions uh, in VH platforms are done in software. There is no separate hardware chip to process crypto traffic. And yes, it does deliver good performance, but when you compare it uh, you know, with platforms that do the same in a hardware chip, it falls short over there. If we compare that with Catalyst 8500, all the processing happens within the QFP 3.0 with inline crypto. So both the encrypt and the decrypt functions are done within the QFP 3.0 which enables high IPsec performance for sd band with up to 29 GPPS. Uh, Catalyst 8500L, 8300, and 8200, they use a core chipset, which is quick assist technology and is a separate chip to do crypto processing. So if a packet comes into one of the PPE cores that needs to be decrypted first for further processing, the packet is sent to the core chip for decrypt and returned for, the, for, return for further processing. There is also no dedicated core for crypto processing on any of the VH platforms, while 8300 and 8200 also don't have dedicated crypto cores. The performance that, say, 
fifth kettle is 8300, which is mostly targeted towards branch deployments, is up to 7 Gbps, which matches with the max performance on the VH5000. So this comparison alone shows you that that is usually deployed at data center side. This, this comparison alone shows you that uh, you know, the power of Catalyst 8000 platforms. Also, both 8500 and 8500L have dedicated crypto cores for much higher IPsec performance. Let's now look at some of the key differences in how the flows are distributed to different cores you know, for all these platforms. So VH platforms, they use a flow-based distribution, which basically pins the flows to each uh, core based on a three tuple hash. So all the subsequent flows from the same tuple resulting in the same hash will be pinned to the same core. This is good from inter-PPE contention perspective, but uh, however, it creates a problem you know, for the networks where elephant flows could limit the power code throughput and create head of line blocking issue, you know, impacting flows on other cores as well. 8500L also uses a flow based distribution but uses a five tuple hash instead of a three tuple used by the VH platform. So there is more flexibility in terms of assignment of the flows to different cores. However, if the use case is for elephant flows, then the recommendation is not to use 8500L for this and instead go for 8500 which is 8500 Twilex or Twilex 4QC that uses load based distribution with no flow pinning. With Catalyst 8500, the assignment of flows happens purely based on the availability of the PPEs and so the elephant flow issue will not be seen with Catalyst 8500. Uh, Catalyst 8300, 8200, ISR 1100 and 1100X platforms, they use a hybrid approach for flow distribution. Uh, flow pinning still happens on these platforms, so the flow gets uh, pinned to the same core based on the tuple hash. However, if a given core is not able to handle a further request for the flow, it can request help from other available cores called as helper cores to help process the data. This enables them to be positioned for use cases such as elephant flow and provide much better performance you know, compared to VH platforms. So to summarize, with Catalyst 8000 platforms, ISR 1100 and 1100X platforms, the overall architecture of how the flow distribution enables a higher IPsec performance you know, when you're comparing this with the VH platforms. Uh, let's now see how different VH platforms uh, compare with Catalyst 8000, ISR 1100, and 1100X platforms. Let's first weigh the VH5000 on the left here against 8500 Twilex 4QC on the right. Foundation on 8500 is the QFP with 224 PPEs and inline crypto plus layer 2 operations. High port density with 10, 40, 100 gig port connectivity available. VH uh, VH5000 has 32 GB RAM, but 8500 can go up to 64 GB. A uh, data plane is uplifted with QFP 3.0 load, load based forwarding, which makes 8500 best for data center deployments. Uh, up to 29 GBPS of SD WAN aggregation and 8000 tunnels you know, makes 8500 to be a powerful SD WAN platform when, when you're comparing with VH5000. Comparing VH5000 with another sibling, 8500 Twilex. The difference being the port offerings of trial ports that can operate in 1 or 10 gig mode and up to 24 GBPS of SD WAN performance. Uh, this gives the flexibility to choose between 8500 Twilex and Twilex 4QC when migrating from 5000 VH5000, as it gives a choice not only in terms of higher IPsec performance uh, but also from a flexible port offerings that can cater not only to current deployments but also to any capacity planning, for example, plan for future. Let's weigh the VH5000 uh, with the Catalyst 8500L on the right. Uh, 8500L comes with trial cores that can be split between control plane, data plane, and service plane with a QFP and DRAM capacities as good as 8500 Twilight 4QC. It provides a higher IPsec performance compared to 28 cores with VH5000. All trial ports offered on 8500L comes without any port license enablement needs, higher DRAM support with up to 64 GB DRAM supported. Advanced flow based forwarding with 5 tuple hash to assign flows compared to 3 tuple hash with VH5000. Up to, 20, up to 10 GBPS of IPsec performance and higher tunnel scale of 8000 tunnels makes 8500 a highly capable aggregation platform. And it can be considered when migrating from VH5000 
except for the elephant flow use cases in which case 8500 twilex or 8500 twilex book you see should be considered Let's say the BH2000 on the left here against 8300 2 and 2S platforms on the right to compare the capabilities. The 8300 2 and 2S is offered in 12 core with, uh, with different with hardware crypto assist and dynamic core allocation uh, with the SOC data path architecture compared to BH2000 x86 based architecture with no dynamic core allocation capabilities. You get two 10 gig capable SFP plus or six 1 gig SFP interfaces with two name. 2 SM and 1 PIM slot to uplift port modularity on 8300s uh, compared with only 8 1 gig and 2 10 gig SFP plus ports on BH2000. The default DRAM matches to 8 GB and is upgradable to 32 GB, helping higher route scale on 8300s uh, with um, improved hardware. It is also able to achieve up to 900 Mbps of services throughput compared to BH5, BH2000, where these features are not supported. Non stick flow based forwarding on 8300 enables best of both worlds of load based forwarding and flow based forwarding, enabling higher performance up to 6.9 Gbps of SD band performance compared to 2.3 Gbps on BH2000 and higher tunnel scale of 6000 SD band tunnels. Uh, 8300 2 and 2S is also more targeted towards large branch deployment. So, if you have a BH2000 that needs to be migrated and also want to look at migration from Future growth perspective, then one can look at 8300 2S for migration. Comparing BS2000 with the youngest 8300 sibling, 8300 1 and 1S, and the difference is this one has eight cores with hardware crypto assist, which uplifts the performance a lot, even when comparing it with 32 cores on BS2000. It comes with same port combinations with the same RAM upgrade options available. Uh, Higher services throughput of 600 Mbps, non stick flow based forwarding for efficient flow assignments, and up to 6.1 Gbps of SD band performance and higher tunnel scale of 6000 tunnels. So, again, 8300 1 and 1S is also targeted for large branch deployments. And when migrating from BH2000, the choice of platform between the two 8300 SKUs, that is the 8300 2 and 2S, and 8300 1 and 1S should be purely based on what performance one is looking for on these platforms. Let's see and compare the capabilities between BH1000 and 8200 1 and 40. So the 8200 and 8200 is offered in 8 core with hardware crypto assist with dynamic core allocation. You get four 1 key ports with option of one name or pin slot for additional modularity. Uh, the default DRAM increases to 8 GB compared to just 2 GB on BH1000 and is upgradable to 32 GB, helping higher route scale on 8200. Non strict flow based forwarding leverages best of uh, load based distribution world while also taking the helper core architecture to increase the per core throughput. It is also able to achieve up to 1 Gbps of SD WAN IPsec uh, throughput, comparing that with only 255 Mbps on BH1000. Higher tunnel scale. Uh, is with 20, 2500 tunnel support on 8200 compared to 1500 on BH1000. And 8200 1 and 40 is targeted more towards mid branch deployments and can be considered as a migration platform for BH1000. Now, comparing with the BH100 platforms, uh, both 100B and 100M, and how it compares with 1100 4G and 1100X4G, and as well as 1100 4G LTE. So you get twice the number of cores on ISR 1100 with support for CAD4 integrated LTE with 1100 4G LTE and support for CAD4 USB dongle. Uh, four router RAM ports are available on ISR 1100 and 1100 X platforms. Higher RAM of 4 GB on 1100 and 8 GB on 1100 X queues for SD WAN security support. ISR 1100 also uses non strict flow based forwarding uh, like the 8300 or 8200, which improves the per core throughput. A much higher throughput of 439 Mbps compared to only 97 Mbps on BH100. Higher tunnel scale of 250 on ISR 1100 and 500 on 1100X that comes with 8 GB DRAM. Uh, 1100 4G, 4G LTE, and 1100X 4G. Uh, these are direct migration platforms for VH100 and they support dual OS as well as uh, you know so for customers that are using uh, 
uh, these platforms with crypto allow us, uh, they can seamlessly now migrate to iOS XE SD WAN on the same platforms. Comparing VH1000 with 1160 and 1100X60, as these are targeted towards small to mid branch deployments, a four cores on both ISR1100 and 1100X with option of dynamic core allocation on, on ISR1100X that allows you to use one core for service plane for SD band security functions. Four 1 gigi routed WAN ports plus two SFP plus uh, SFP ports. Again, higher RAM support of 4GB or 8GB on ISR1100 and 1100X respectively. Non-stick flow-based forwarding for higher power core throughput and twice the throughput on 1100 and 1100X with up to 428 Mbps of SD WAN uh, performance. Higher tunnel scale of 1500 on 1160 and twice that on 1100X60 with 3000 tunnels. If the requirement is for light to light replacement, then the 1100 and 1100X platforms are perfect for small to mid branch deployments. However, if there is an increased, for example, a capacity planning plan, uh, you know, in the, on the roadmap, then looking at 8200 or 8300 makes sense to, you know, count for increased performance and scale requirements. Lastly, let's compare VH Cloud to Catalyst 8000V. So with Catalyst 8000V, you get higher vCPU support of 16 vCPUs on AWS, Azure, and GCP with deployments also supported both for KVM and ESXi. Maximum memory support on VH Cloud is 8 GB, while you get twice the memory support of 16 GB with 8000V. Full SD-WAN security features are supported with 8000V, while only enterprise uh, firewall is supported with VH Cloud. A uh, VH Cloud also has flow based forwarding, so has the same flow pinning problem like the other physical VH platforms. While 8000V uses load based distribution, which is which is a low latency based uh, fast forwarding. Native cloud integration is not supported on VH Cloud, while 8000V supports AWS Cloud WAN and Azure Virtual WAN. It matches VH Cloud on SD WAN performance of up to 4.5 Gbps. Uh, tunnel scale is low with 3000 tunnels support on 8000V. However, we are working on to improve the tunnel scales further in the future releases as well. Uh, 8000V, if you look at leverages, a lot of key features from physical platforms like dynamic core allocation support for multi layer security and app QE, and uses that for, you know, for the secure cloud journey or, or the cloud positioning. Also, native cloud integration enables 8000V, if you compare it with VH Cloud, to be a perfect platform for migrating migration. Now we do publish, uh, you know, performance for all major releases from time to time. However, we are we also engage Miocom to independently validate the functionality and performance of our SD WAN solution, you know, enabled by Catalyst 8000 Edge platform. So this is validated by the Miocom engineers, and they have published a report link for which is called out here. And this is a third-party validation, a kind of a certification of our SD WAN solution. So please feel free to go through this report, uh, you know, offline. The report link is also called out here. I do have performance and scale sites, uh, slides here for your reference. Uh, they are, these are just FI slides that you can refer to them offline. Uh, the comparison here is between the you know, different VH platforms uh, when comparing with the Catalyst 8000 and 100 x platforms. So if you see here, uh, if I take one slide as an example, for example, if you look at uh, Catalyst 8500 or 8300 versus VH2000, uh, the, the scale requirements on, if you compare it with VH2000 with 8300, 2S or 1 and 1S, the scale is almost twice that with what you get with VH2000, if you look at all these features over here. So not only the performance, also from a scale, for, a scale perspective, the Catalyst 8000 platforms are have a much higher scale. And these numbers are also mentioned here for your comparison. So please feel free to go through them offline once you have the slides. So this brings us to our second following question. Which platforms would you like to migrate to ISXC SD WAN in the next year or so? Uh, the options are BH platforms, ISI 1100 or 1100X that run with chill hours, or maybe both platforms. So hi Edward, uh, my name is uh, Suresh Kivi. I'm part of SDV and Technical Marketing Team. So uh, my session, I'm going to put together a two uh, thing. One is about uh, automation tools followed by a small demo. 
and then we talk about at a high level at design slides how do you migrate or your transition uh, from vh to uh, uh, a ch without without impacting any downtime kind of stuff so when we talk about automation tool so let's understand why the importance of automation here so we have a design which is working with the vh deployment currently that particular design it's only a device migration not a topology not a design change even not a controller migration so everything is remained same i just wanted to replace the box from vh to a, a, a ch uh, ch device so in that case what is the transition i should take care of it the transition which i need to figure out first of all we need to figure out what is the equivalent a uh, box but the equivalent ch in terms of throughput bandwidth comparison the second step which is what is the equivalent of the features is there any feature gap that is associated with that so finding a right set of ios image these are the two activities once you get into a platform model and also a operating system which is ios xc version for a feature based on the feature set what you have deployed currently the next step is is going to be a a migration stage where you are going to convert a vh specific templates into a ch specific templates so there you will have to do a lot of manual operations so those are the operations which we could think about maybe we can do an automation that automation can actually help you in terms of operational simplicity as well as operational efficiency this is a major target why we introducing our automation tool so we come up with a kind of total five tools each tool is actually help you in each phases so let's talk about the tools which here uh sahasra is one tool before you touch any network right it's it's a common practice where you want to take it as a backup and if any something went wrong you will take a restore as well this is one of the uh, installer based tool that can be installed on your laptop connecting to the controllers connecting to the uh, connect to the controllers and then you take the configuration backups and then make it a copy in a copy as that the second tool is stvent show tool this tool is also a small python script that you are going to install on on stvent on stvent we manage in this case so the here the use case for this specific tool now you have a vh devices that is talking to that is uh, that has actually established a control connection to the controller and also you are putting iOS XC STVAN devices into STVAN into the vManage. That means over a period of time during a transition or a migration time, you have operating both simultaneously VH devices as well as iOS XC STVAN devices. So in this case, the question comes: Does my vManage is ready to handle both uh, both v, uh, VHs as well as CHs in terms of the scale perspective? So this is one of the cool a uh, uh, cool tool which is installed on the Python script on vManage. so it actually determines you the capacity planning of the controller especially on we manage and also it gives you if anything wrong in correcting the logs in terms of failure issues so this is one important tool which we actually install on on we manage the second one is a dna rat now you are taking care of the controller part controller and stvan controller part taking your backups and also checking the capacity planning now you go to go to the end point which is the devices actual devices of the vh so this particular tool dna rat tool is actually kind of provide you a feature parity hardware compatibility analysis and also gives you the a summary of the bom which is equivalent from ch to a vh comparison so these are the three tools is we actually call as a readiness tools these readiness tools is is actually help you before you start any migration next set of tool is convert to st1 tool the convert to stvan tool is actually the middle part of your migration uh, work where you will spend most of the time uh, on this phase so the reason why in in the viptel os has certain feature set and ios xc or stvan has a, a rich in terms of featureness over a period of time that's the reason we have a different templates different configuration cli template feature templates that are, are are separately that we need to attach to the ios xs to ios xs to devices so for the investment what you made on the vh you put a operational team they spend some time they spend a lot of time to design the viptel templates 
Now you want to spend same significant of time converting those into iOS XCST when it takes a lot of time. That's one of the reasons we introduced this tool where it actually discover existing all VH templates and then get converted into iOS XCST web. And another tool is, is uh, STMAN BMT tool. It actually validates your entire migration flow starting from when you start the OS, when you start upgrading the OS and then uh, a device comes up and then validating the configuration. It actually does a validate of the STMAN, um, uh, validate the entire your migration workflow. So these are the five uh, major tools. The availability of this tool is, is hosted some of them are on-prem, which is a small installer file that you install on your laptop and you install on vManage. The rest of DNA RAD, convert to SD-WAN, SD -WAN, BMT, these tools are cloud hosted. And, and the invention of these tools is actually started in 2018. That actually brings you the amount of the quality testing that, they, that, that these tools are went through is almost quite close to uh, three to four years now. And, and any partners or customers can freely down, freely to download and they can install on their own. But there is no license that is the cost associated with these tools. So I'm just taking a polling question here, uh, pass in one minute. Uh, which VH uh, to iOS access to the migration tool have you tried in the previously? It's most likely the answer is A, convert to SD1, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Do you know that that's which we yeah, anticipate that? Okay. okay. So, so for the interest of um, automation tools, we talked about five tools. So since poll also tells us at least some percentage of people are interested in convert to S2 and S2 tool, this tool is basically hosted in AWS uh, with Cisco CCO credentials. You could able to get access it. If you don't have a Cisco CISO credential in, your, in the tool, built-in tool, you can uh, contact support is there. You can talk, you can request uh, uh, and send out an email. They will add you a email whitelisting into AWS call list. So this, uh, this tool having uh, a multiple workflow that is being supported. So I will categorize it into three, the uh, three workflows. The one category of this is device and feature template category. In this category of workflow, it actually discover entire your vManage and discovers all existing VH templates in one go. It can convert into all VH template into CH, which is a live vManage. Basically, underneath we talk to by using APIs and discover the tool. And the second option is a Sastra Archive. This is an offline tool. If you customer some security reason, if you don't have an access to that, what we can do use a Sastra tool download your existing VH template, upload it into the tool and then get converted and converted output you can make, you can take and input into the vManage. So these are the two options if you want to migrate entire templates. A second workflow is a device specific CLI configurations. Let's say you have one particular device, but one particular device you would like to convert from non sd wan to sd wan or even VH CLI to CH CLI or even the feature templates. You can you can take a, a device CLI specific configurations, and we also introduce uh, a policy localized centralized conversion as well. So I'll take a quick demo for a five minutes of this tool. How we are going to walk through. So I have a vManage. This vManage is actually hosted in the dcloud lab. Currently, I have actual uh, vanages. In the tool vanages, out of it, I have few. Uh, VH basic deployment and also CH. So all the devices has been loaded into my vManage. And then I have go to a configurations, templates. So I have a whole bunch of a feature templates. All these feature templates, which I spend more time to, uh, to create all the device specific feature templates specific to the uh, VH. And all these are to today is actually based on the VH basic deployments. Now I'm going to convert all these feature templates into a VH, uh, into a SCH specific conversion. So what I will do, I'll log into a convert to SD WAN tool. So once you log into the convert to SD WAN tool, right now this your address is uh, convert to license. We are actually using a 64.71. It is in a staging server because we are actually adding a couple of workflows into the system. Okay. So as I show you, 
we have a three workflows device and feature template conversion device CLI configuration to template conversion as well as CLI to CLI if you would like to convert from mail CLI to CLI a CL CLI and as well as policy conversion the way we build in the tool is a self-supporting model system this tool you have a dedicated video walkthroughs each and every workflows and also detailed documentation and then another part is a contact support if you have a particular issue you actually once you log into that your email id is associated into the system like this and then there is a subject where if you see any problem and workflow id you can configure so you it will send an email with the case notes the case id because we don't have a tax support this particular to this tool so you will have to rely on this self uh, supporting tool built within the system so for the interest of time i will take a small demo with the live we manage the we manage which i have it here is 172.39.60 i'll take this ip address i'll put actually here add a new one then ip address port number i'll give you admin admin and put a save credential for its time so what it does once i updated the b minus credential into the tool the backend system it actually initiated an api call to discover the existing b manage so it's trying to do a connecting option where it will go and connect to the existing b manage so it could not connect the public ip successful let me check the ip address yeah it is a 60 so i put a only six that's the reason Okay, now it is get connected. Now it's trying to phase in importing. It actually getting importing all device and feature templates from the vManage into the tool. So it takes a little bit time uh, getting imported all the all the feature templates, the device templates uh, into the tool. Yeah, so now it got imported. Now it is asking a target device. So which device you would like to convert? I'm actually specifying the CSR1000V and also I'm using the same IP address which I previously used it. Now what I'm doing, I imported, I specify my select CH device model which I would like to convert the template. So Whenever it discovers, it's discovering all these, these are the feature templates that is exist all those things. And then I have a policies also. I can pick and choose which template I would like to convert. So my CSR1KV, I would like to convert from VH, uh, V2, and these are the templates. If you want to uncheck certain templates, you don't want it, you can have a, a flexibility where you can uncheck or you can convert entire templates, entire feature templates into, uh, into device specific. So now I'm going to go and converting. So this is a, one of the status bar which you can see what actually happening in terms of conversion. It tells you uh, on the uh, left side, you have policies and templates, okay? And it will check you one by one option what is being converted for a period of time. So it converts successfully all the policies which are associated that particular device, which is a list localized and centralized now it is time to convert a device template the point what you see it will rename using a session id the 801 at the end you see for every template that is a template name you would like to you would see in your we manage the 801 is a session id let's say uh, 801 is a session id with that session id when you have a, any issues in the help tool mention this session id 801 that way you could able to track your session what went wrong if in case of any failures so policies are converted and now it is trying to convert the feature template as well as device templates so device templates also successfully converted now let's take a look at into the vManage that these templates are already imported into the vManage or not so as i show you these are the our uh, previous templates that are associated with the VH. Now let's check here 801. In the tool, the two session ID what we have is 801 here. And now you got Excel all the converted templates. It actually gives you a very good name 
from CH to CH to CSR 1001 KB and the template ID. So these are the, all templates are being successfully converted. Now, as you are admin, what you will do, all these feature templates, you will go and uh, go to the device model and then associate all the feature template into a device template and then preview, take a preview the configuration, ensure tool does the good job or not, or is there any modification you would like to take it, you can go ahead and tweak it. So that's the way the, uh, the migration approach. It only converts, it doesn't attach to the device. That means you have a control, the converted templates on it. So converted templates, you can pick it up, select the device model again, same device model, associated all the converted template and push down to the device. Okay, that's the workflow you will have to do once being templates being converted into the system. Okay, so this is the dashboard you see a user lining a tracking session. Right now, I just with my ID 801, my email ID, live with the workflow which I selected, and it says successfully exported. If it is a failure, you will see a validated issue, a, a kind of red which is specific to the VHCL to CL conversion. We recently introduced this particular feature and we are working in enhancing this feature. Anything Sahasra or Q or live we manage converting them, you don't see any problem because this tool has been well tested at particular features. So that's a, a kind of small demo on the tool. Uh, I would actually request you play around this tool, provide us a feedback to improve the quality and and and, you will, and also it will actually help you in terms of operational efficiency. Now let's go back to the session. So that's the automation tools, what tools are available and and and, and one tool demo that particularly to the convert to ST1. Let's go to the migration best practices. In terms of migration best practices, we put together a couple of slides. These slides, these are the best practices, what we think, but it may change in your day-to-day, -day, depending on your environment. Let's understand a small uh, deployment model a very simple deployment model which is a, a data, single data center and a three branches. A data center today it was deployed VH2K at the data center which are connected to the van aggregation with, with the van aggregation here and then you have a site 10, site 11, site 12 these are the VH deployments. So with this simple setup how I could play around my migration okay and the first migration always I would think your point is the data center migration. So in the data center migration, you start the data center migration first and then replacing the branches one by one. That's the way your migration strategy that moves. In data center, how do you migrate? So in terms of migration, what we are saying that a greenfield kind of deployment model. In this deployment model, what you do, if the customer has a flexibility in terms of having a dedicated MPLS or dedicated internet such here, you don't have to do any replacement in this case. You go and deploy the new CAT 8K routers and then you connect the new circuits if it is available and then terminate those circuits at the data center itself. That means you have a two set of devices acting as a hub router. One is which is an existing device, CAT VH2K and the second one is CAT 8K. So there are a couple of pros and cons. Uh, which is a dust pack. I mean, what is the if you go with this option? What is the what is the challenges? And uh, it's available in the red. You see because availability of circuits, dedicated circuit for a new CAT 8K parallel to the existing VH2K that might be the cost effective cost cost increase in solution. So some customers may like it, some customer may not be like it. So depending on your environment, you may choose this is one of the option. Another option I have is a parallel deployment model. In this case, you are actually not buying any new circuits. Okay, you are actually leveraging existing investment which you already made on the van aggregation routers. You connect them CAT 8 KV router between data center LAN versus van aggregation. So in this model, in the CAT 8 K2 van aggregation. In the CAT 8K2 aggregation, the red and green links are MPLS as well as internet links. You can have a private IP addresses. Those private prefixes, prefixes you can go and talk to the service provider and house those prefixes into the MPLS. Then they'll have a reachability to the uh, to the data set, uh, to the branches. This is the one of the best deployment model which we actually recommend for all of our customers, where you are actually 
not investing in much in terms of buying in new circuits. You are existing leveraging the existing infrastructure by placing in the middle of van, uh, van aggregation in the data center search. So once you have this deployment model, you will have a parallel things you can run uh, CAT 8 KB migration, uh, migration as well as BHTP at the data center. So another approach is a staging approach. It's like a kind of a rip and replacement model. In this case, what you will do, you don't need to have a WAN connectivity. If, if you have any port challenges uh, at the at the WAN aggregation routers, if you have port challenges, you can may go use this staging approach. In this case, you connect CAT 8KV to the VH, uh, VH2K. It's one of the service VPN. Talk to the controllers, get the configuration, and you will have a migration window. During migration window, you will actually replacing existing production setup of VH2K, uh, VH2K into CAT 8 kb So that's the stage you will have to do it. So that's that means there is a migration window, you have to take that risk to this case. That's one of the staging approach what you do. So these are the three variation supports, greenfield, parallel setup, staging approach. Depending on your environment, you may choose a data center replacement. And branch replacement is very straightforward. A staging approach where you have a staging environment, you can preload at the configuration and send the router to the field and then power up and connect to the LAN switch connector. This is one of the straight forward what you do in the staging approach at the data center at the, at the branch site. Okay. So the next one is is critical thing is about the policy. Right now, this is what the environment it looks like. So considering I have a parallel day, a parallel um, data center with uh, running uh, BH2K as well as CAT 8KV, both are running and also sites, site 10, site 11 also having a staging environment. Now with this, how I apply to new policy? Now your existing infrastructure right now uh, running two isolated environment. One is VH specific environment, which is a production deployment. And logically, you are bringing another setup, which is CAT 8KB with the same existing setup. So with that, how do I fine tune my VSMOD policy? So what about sites? The motivation of the policy change is basically, we don't want to disturb the, the production environment. At the same time, we want to ensure the CAT 8KB branches talking to the CAT 8KB hub at the data center. So that's the, our motivation. So in that case, you can have a policy updated dedicated system range, dedicated site ID range, color restricted, dedicated tunnel group and tunnel filtering. These are the few fine tweaks you can, you can set your policy so that the CAT 8KB router is only talking to the CAT 8KB hub without any disturb the existing policy. This is one of the best practices where you can fine tune your policies, uh, uh, the cap between BH and CH operating in the same environment. So this is Whatever I told you, hey, looks, this is good while you're talking it, but we really wanted to test it. So what we have done, hey, if you want to play a migration lab, we were actually facilitating a decode migration lab. In that lab, you will have exactly the same deployment model what you see it here. You will have a dual data center. Uh, you have a single data center with the CAT 8KB and VH, and also uh, the site 10 site learn with the VH center. It is hosted in our Cisco D Cloud Lab and it is integrated with our POC tool, which is Convert to SD WAN tool as well. So, without any investment at your environment, logging to Cisco platform, D Cloud platform, book a session, the detailed lab guide is associated in this lab. Practice it and experience your migration, exp uh, entire migration flow. How are you going to do it? This experience always makes you perfect. So try out this lab environment to get to an answer experience. So that's the folks I have and we have certain collaterals which put together who on how I can download these tools, how we get an access. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to send out an email as well. So that's pretty much from my session, guys. Thank you so much. You can open up your questions if you guys have any questions you want to take it up. Yeah, yeah actually the team has been doing a fabulous job answering most of the questions so there's only one that i i would like to share with you and to all the panel is it's like this i currently have ph devices deployed in my network are there any new updates going forward for those ones who have deployed bh devices in their network oh uh, uh, so 
the development perspective, the end of sale is already we made in 2009. There is no new net features that we are developing on VH side. Okay, so we have another one. How does automate conflict conversation handle going from five port VH to four port? Yeah, that's a good question. So for us, it's we only uh, talk to the template. Let's say you created a template. Uh, uh, five port template on VH. If if we only convert mapping into one part, then up to the admin user where you see, hey, this port doesn't have a additional configuration. The missing additional configuration will have to do it manually. All we do, we recognize the existing template of pipe port VH, then converted into a, a converted into the same template uh, iOS 60 template four port then you will take a review the configuration whether single port is missing and that will have to delete in the config. It's a good question, Michael. Yeah. Yes, there is one question, David. Uh, does it only work with the feature template or it can also parse the CLI template? Yes, so we have conversion of CLI to feature templates, feature template to feature template, as well as CLI to CLI conversion. So all these three options are available within the tool. All right. Okay. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much. With, with all those details, we we kind of close this session actually, and I would like to thank all the experts who joined to make this possible and remind you that if you have any extra questions related to this event, uh, you can ask them in this event. It's going to be available till August fifth, so that's going to be with Prakash and all the experts exploration the rest that you have seen here. Also, remember that events like this, you will be able to find them in the different social media channels that we manage. So we're going from Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and if you have the mobile Cisco technical app, that could be a place to find it out. Also, if we have among these audience people who speak different languages, pardon me, please don't forget that you can find events like these and other resources in your local language. And finally, if you're looking for further IT training, you can find more at the Cisco Learning Network. They also provide webinars and events like the ones that you have seen today. Once again, thank you so much everyone for your time and for joining to this event. And remember that once you close out this event window, you will receive a survey. Uh, once you receive it, please help us out to complete it. That, that gives us an idea of how we are doing in this event and help us out to improve your experience during these webinars. So once again, thank you to Rich, Prakash, Nid, and the lovely ladies who have been helping out in this session to cover the questions. We hope to see you in the coming session, and thank you very much, and see you next time. Thanks, Ismila, for hosting this session and your support coordinating on this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care.